So this is why I've come to this conclusion about PhDs, which I'll have announced to you. Um, I noticed that there's another fellow standing at a desk about like this, and he has all these rolled up pieces of paper with little ribbons around them, with names on them. And he picks one up and he calls out a name, and one of the PhDs can candidates gets up and marches up on the stage and everybody applauds, especially his family, and he comes over. And this is what the gentleman does. He takes the roll in this hand, he shakes hands with the other one like this, and he hands it to him in his other hand. And the PhD candidate picks it up. Now, if you watch very carefully, and I'm very, very careful in this, I, I, I'm a very good observer, you see. I have gotten down level with the stage. And he walks across the stage like an ordinary person. But the minute that piece of paper hits his hand, if you look carefully, you'll see a small space <laughs> between the floor and the PhD. Because he moves around rather strangely. He's skidding, you see. He has a hard time moving now. But as he leaves the stage, he's exalted. He has changed magically. He's now a PhD. And it's a holy sort of a thing, you see. It's sort of a religious experience. I'm lying about the being off the stage. It's not really true, but I just was want to test your credulity, you see. <laughs> I'm glad that you laughed at it. Thank you. <laughs> the point is that they think that this has made them very special. But what is, the, this is the question I have, what is the reason for the man on the stage there who gives these things out for wearing gloves? <laughs> now that's very suspicious and I got thinking about that. Why would he wear gloves? And this is my theory, take it or leave it. I think that in those rolls of paper, there is a secret chemical. <laughs> a secretly, highly engineered chemical, which absorbed into the skin, goes directly into the blood, and to the brain. And paralyzes a part of the brain in the speech center. <laughs> that small part of the brain, which could normally say, I don't know, and I was wrong. <laughs> now that's my PhD theory, and again, it's only a joke. I ask you not to take me too seriously on that at all, but I have tested it out on PhDs. <laughs> I say, are you a PhD? Oh yes, probably from Rutgers University, you know. Oh really? Uh, say this after me, I was wrong. <laughs> and he'll say, I was heard. <laughs> I got, I got, I got, I got. It's not a pretty picture. It's not a good thing to see whatsoever. And I was wrong is even worse. I was <laughs> I was <laughs> You cannot say it. I think my theory is probably correct. I'm not sure, but I think it's correct. So again, that's my little bit of fun at PhDs. Without them, we'd be far worse off, I can assure you. But with some of them, we're not too well off. <laughs> so I have another video to show you now. And I, I think that you'll uh, you know, get a bit of a kick out of this one as well. And uh, you will now see what we call psychic surgery. This is done by the so-called surgeons in the Philippine Islands and several other places around the world as well. But particularly in the Philippine Islands, it purports to be surgery. It has nothing to do with surgery. Watch very carefully and you'll see how it's done. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, remember one thing. I should be dead by now. <laughs> I took this huge dose of homeopathic medicine. In fact, I'll, I'll take a few more just to make sure. <laughs> I don't want to take any chances with, with cheating you, you see. Here, here we have another 20 of them or so. Hmm? Down they go. And I will drink the glass, part of the glass of water. Are you feeling hmm? asleep already? <laughs> yeah. I think I'm, I'm very, very dead now. <laughs> I certainly should be dead. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, to do these show business-like demonstrations for you, it's something that will stay with you. I should be dead by now if it's possible for me to get an overdose of homeopathy. It's obviously not possible. I can't prove that something doesn't exist. Now, I could perform an experiment, I could design an experiment, and I will right now here in front of you. Let's, uh, well, it's very difficult to prove that someone doesn't exist, but let's examine one of the phenomena that is claimed, flying reindeer. Reindeer flying? I don't think so, unless you have a very big catapult.
I'm not sure how reindeer would fly. But let's test the theory. Let us go up on top of the Eiffel Tower with 20 reindeer, okay? I think you see what's going to happen. <laughs> it's a brutal experiment, but it's in the name of science, so there. And we number them, one, two, all the way up to 20. And then we have a gentleman standing over here who's making the notes, and he says the temperature is so-and-so, and the time is such-and-such, such, okay. And number one, and he finds number one, take number one over to the edge of the Eiffel Tower, and I do the experiment, of course, and I push and I say, fly! <laughs> Hmm. Uh, right down opposite number one. No. <laughs> uh, number two. Oh, come on, number two. You're in there someplace. Uh, we drag number two out. The same thing. Push. Oh, my goodness. What am I going to get? I don't know because I haven't done the experiment. But I presume uh, that I am going to get 20 very dead and broken reindeer at the foot of the Eiffel Tower and probably a couple of gendarmes down there saying, I don't know, Pierre, here comes another one. <laughs> I presume that because I know I have experience of the world, you see. But at the end of that experiment, this is my important question now, have I proven that Santa Claus doesn't exist or even that reindeer cannot fly? No, not until I perform the experiment with every reindeer, and I've got to look at the motivation of the reindeer too, perhaps they just weren't interested in flying. <laughs> very difficult experiment to do, very difficult thing to prove a negative, and I cannot prove a negative. Now, we look upon ourselves as educated and modern folks, all of us do, yet we still didn't believe in angels, gods, demons, devils, heaven and hell, and eternal life. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to grow up, and we should do it now rather than later. I'm going to ask for questions and answers, but before that, I will give you an ample opportunity to forgive me for the trick that failed and applaud me for the rest of it that worked.